Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of your Handmade Business Television, YHBTV. Um, <clears throat> we hope that your Thursday is half as fun as ours, because that would mean it's really fun. <laughs> um, we're so glad you're here. Uh, YHBTV is uh, Academy of Handmaids weekly broadcast to talk about all things hashtag maker life. Um, so I am Sharon Fain, uh, co-founder or founder and director of Academy of Handmade, along with my partner in crime, Isaac Watson, the other director of Academy of Handmade. Um, and yeah, we're here to chat today about surprise press and how to drop everything with style because this happens. You get a call sometimes and there's like a promotional opportunity waiting to happen and you have to figure out, is this worth it? Is this something I can do? So we're here to, we're here to help you on that. How are you doing, Isaac? I'm good. Um, I have to say I am very excited for Craftcation, which is coming up soon. It is. Hopefully we get to see some of you guys at Craftcation. Uh, that is happening in two weeks, I think, two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, thereabouts first week of april so um in ventura we're very excited about it we are going to be leading some think tanks we are going to try to do yhbtv live from there <laughs> so we'll see how that goes <laughs> fingers crossed that works out okay um yeah so uh pretty pretty excited about that um trying to think if we're excited about anything else happening <laughs> I mean, I'm excited because I'm going to Amsterdam next week. But, Ooh, yes. Uh, and and if all goes well, I'll be broadcasting from there for next week's YHBTV. Yeah, so. Isaac's been doing some remotes lately, so yeah. <laughs> locations. Last week I was in Stevenson, Virginia, which is a very well, exciting place. Yes. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, there is a poll um, letting us know it's a super easy poll uh, about any press opportunities that you've had. Uh, Dawn said that she has had press, but it wasn't for her business. She used to run the Junior Rangers program at her state park and was featured for that program. Um, and she is the dire behind fairy tale knits. If you are in our Facebook group, you might know Dawn's recent questions about line sheets. Uh, if you are not at our Facebook group, you will want to get in there. So Isaac will put the link in the chat area so that you can you can request access to that. Um, am I missing anything, Isaac? Uh, are we broadcasting on Facebook today? We should be. Granted, that given what, what uh, I've inputted for this week, we should. But you never know how technology is, so. Well, if you are not? watching on Facebook, oh, we're glad true. you are. Uh, yes. But we're over here on Crowdcast where it's a lot more fun because we actually get to chat with you. That is true. So come on over here when you get a second and uh, join us. Yes. Um, if you did not join us this last week, we talked about uh, your line sheets last week. So you're gonna to wanna to check that one up. You can watch all of the replays up at the top of here. There's a little uh, thing that says what session it is. So uh, don't don't go there just yet, but you'll know that later on, if you're interested in watching the one about the line sheets or the one about, what was the other one we did, Isaac? Um, relationships with a printer. Ooh, yes. Had lots to say on both of those, so. We ran a little uh, long there. I hope we didn't bore people, but it was fun. Yeah, it was a lot. We had a lot to say there. So um, I guess we'll hop in and start talking about what happens when you get a promotional opportunity come your way. And I'm sure you guys all have had it, or if you have not had it, you will have it. You get an email, you get a phone call, and somebody wants to feature you on a blog. They have a video for you that they would like you to participate in. Local TV would like to feature you. Uh, there's all kinds of situations where this, this could happen. Um, you get asked to be part of some sort of promo video for Etsy maybe, or the craft show that you are um, going to be participating in. So, um, 
if it hasn't happened yet, it will happen to you. And one of the things that's hard about these opportunities is you kind of want to say yes to everything. But if you said yes enough times, then you will all of a sudden want to say no to everything because you will have probably gotten burned. And we want to help you not get burned. And we want to help you to maximize all the press possible because I have definitely had it. Uh, my background's in PR and marketing where um, because a client wasn't maximizing their press, um, they really didn't get a lot out of, you know, TV features or things like that. So um, we want to make sure that you get the most out of that um, because just just showing up in a newspaper or on on your local TV station or radio uh, doesn't necessarily automatically equal to sales. So you want to start it, Isaac? Yeah. Um, so we have a couple. Um, we have like three major tips with lots of detailed sub tips <laughs> um, that we wanted to dive into today. So I guess three major categories of uh, of thoughts and and advice on this. Um, so the the first big one is really all about evaluating these opportunities as they come in. Um, like Sharon said, we want to. We want to think that we'll say yes to everything. Sometimes we may not want to, or it comes in at just a really bad time. You're like, oh, should I do this? Should I not? Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about some of the things that you should consider when um, uh, the when the opportunity comes your way that will help you decide whether or not it's something you should jump at. Um, so first of all, is this something that you've been wanting or looking for? If you have long had the dream of being on your local news morning show featuring your products and they come knocking the day before and say, we need you here at the studio at 4.30 in the morning, that's probably a sign that you should probably go for it. <laughs> Even if it means waking up at 3.30 to get ready, right? Um, so uh, think, keep that in mind. Is it is it good press? Is it press that you've wanted? Is it um, is it a feature of some sort that um, that has been on kind of your wish list or your dream uh, list for for your business? Um, that's definitely gonna gonna put a check in that box. Another thing to consider is whether or not this is a paid opportunity, and uh, you know. There's two ways that can go. One is uh, people paying you for your time to do something. So maybe it's um, you know somebody paying for you to go and do demos at a festival that they're organizing or something like that, um, where where you know the attendees are going to come up and check out your work and have an opportunity to buy, or maybe they won't allow you to buy, but they do want you to demo and hand out your business card. So the question there would be like, are they going to pay you for your time um, if you don't have the opportunity to sell? Uh, and then the flip side to that is, is this an opportunity that's uh, pay to play? And uh, that those are, I would say they're a little less common, but occasionally um, you'll have, you know, uh, you'll have I feel like these are very common, actually. I feel are like a really? lot of now we're coming at people and saying, do you want to be in my gift guide? You got to drop 20. You want to do this or that? You got to drop some money um, to be part of this, you know, publicity opportunity, which it's right. really just basically old fashioned advertising. So I feel like sometimes this, these opportunities get dressed up as, you know, publicity when really it's just being part of an advertisement, which is not necessarily bad. You just have to real like, you just have to put it in context of what it actually is and not how they're trying to sell it to you, that people will try to ask you to pay money in order to participate in something. Because even like the thing you said, like there's, you know, you know, maybe maybe somebody wants you to come to their festival or whatever and do demos and you can't actually sell and maybe they're not paying you, but you can hand out business cards. Well, sometimes those people will actually make you pay them to be there. And you're like, but I'm teaching. <laughs> I don't I'm not a teacher for a living. Um, why would I do this? Like I'm the so it's the the payment has to be about like who's getting who's benefiting who the most here. And if you feel like you're getting a lot of benefit, then cool. But 
you got to be re look really hard because, you know, sometimes you can get blinded by the name of the organization. I remember that when, you know, Oprah asked that professional, I don't know, gymnast or something to perform at one of her things and it went viral, the response. I don't know. Do you remember that a few years ago, Isaac? No, that, that's news to me. It's like a acrobatic type person or something. And Oprah had a thing nearby and this woman just like was like, uh, I am not going to do this for exposure. <laughs> you can pay me. Like, I know it sounds like, oh, cool. I get to be with Oprah, but no, like other people pay me for this. You can pay me too. I know you have the money to pay me. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that, um, I think, yeah, it, it come. it also comes down to like, how much time do you have to prepare? And is that realistic for representing your business appropriately? Um, going back to the morning show example, like, you know, if they're calling you at six o'clock in the evening and saying they need you at the studio at the crack of dawn to show off your products, uh, is that enough time for you to get ready? Um, what else do you have to go going on? Do you have products that, that you have on hand to take in there? Do you, uh, do you have clean clothes? Are you, in the, <laughs> are you at the end of your laundry cycle and you actually have nothing to wear? Like those, those are legitimate things to think about. Um, so you want to make sure it, it, it is important to be nimble and on your feet with these kinds of things. But, um, the last thing you want to do is rush yourself and stress yourself out and put yourself in a situation where you are so nervous or so unprepared that it goes terribly. Yeah, if it's a, if it's an opportunity where it's like you could be there and selling your product and set up stuff, but if you don't have enough products and you know you're not prepared for this, you know at all, um, sometimes you know the the 24 hours of preparation is just not enough, and it's not worth it. Like you can get burned out, you will fall behind on production in other ways. So um, you just just think about you know there there could be that 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 possibility be that you're expending more energy and time than is actually worth it for sure um again also too thinking about what you get in return will you have something at the end of it that you can use to promote yourself like a video to share an article online in a respected you know publication things like that um just because, you know, somebody's online and can give you <laughs> give you exposure it doesn't mean their audience is right for you. It doesn't mean that, you know, you'll have something that's like a, a good product at the end that you'd be proud of to share with other people. Sometimes you do stuff and you're like, uh, actually, I don't want anyone to ever see this. So, yeah, um, I would say the last thing on our list for uh, evaluating an opportunity would definitely be doing your research. Um, if it's not something you're familiar with, um, then you want to dig in and figure out, is this actually a legitimate outlet? Is this something that has a decent sized audience that meshes with my audience? Um, and if you can't find anything, I think it's worthwhile to uh, reach out to some friends and just kind of do a gut check and say, hey, I got this opportunity. Does this sound like something I should take? Um, because the those kind of outside perspectives, people who know you and know your business, but aren't you making the decision um, can help you stay a little bit grounded that way. So Other makers share... can also tell you too, I think like, oh, they've been coming to me too. They just ask everybody. Like the opportunity mm -hmm. is not that special. They're just like churn and burn. Like, I, you know, I feel like sometimes these things will re get presented to you like, oh, we've selected you special. And it's like, uh, they haven't really selected you special. They're really just going through a list of emails that they've <laughs> culled off the internet. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I wanted to share a story um, that's kind of adjacently related along these lines. Uh, so my husband is an app developer and a couple years back, um, he got an email from um, some cable news channel. And it was one that we'd never really heard of before, but they basically were saying, hey, we want to do a little segment on the app that you make. Um, we have this massive audience and it gets shared on these other networks. And 
this, that, and the other, and this is the broadcast time. Um, here's our demographics. Uh, but we want you to, if you're interested in this, it will cost you X amount to cover the production costs for the segment. Um, because we don't have advertisers on our show is what they, that was their argument. So we thought about it and said, hmm, yeah, okay, well, let's consider this. This could be interesting. Um, their, their market segment is adjacent to the apps market segment. So, okay, let's do it. So we paid the money did the thing, uh, provided all the information, um, you know, worked with their producer to make sure that what they were saying was accurate and it all happened, yada, 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 yada. Um, but there was never any big uptick in sales, uh, for the app. And so, um, a little bit later on down the road, we came across an article by somebody who had, um, inter or reached out to a bunch of people who had been featured on this network for this little like app of the day segment and it turns out that nobody was getting any kind of traffic from it and that uh when they looked at the hard costs of it and everything like that they, they determined that it was kind of bogus the whole thing and it was that was like a big lesson to us to say you know we've got to do our research a little bit better and maybe uh you reach out to some people if we can't find information on this outlet because it doesn't really fit and it, it turns out it's not actually an opportunity. It's more just like, here, pay us for an ad that doesn't actually benefit you or give you any sales. I would also add to the research in that sometimes you will discover that a company is maybe not uh, philo philosophically or politically aligned with you and might have views that um, if you did just a little big, bit of digging, you might find, um, I was actually, um, as I mentioned, I do PR, I was actually looking at um, putting a um, client on a, a, a radio show. And then I looked at the radio show as I was just kind of doing a little bit of investigating. And that radio show had gotten in, had like a big controversy surrounding it. Um, I don't, I forget what it was, but it was like they, you know, how these like shock jockey morning shows are kind of, you know, loud mouthy and just say whatever I want. And it, he said something that was that was pretty offensive, I think, to a lot of people. So it was like, well, we should, you know, be careful in deciding if we want to pitch to that show. So, you know, things like that, if if somebody is actually, you know, you know, uh, an outlet that is mired in controversy or <laughs> whatever. Um, it, it won't always show from just sort of surface, but you can kind of start to dig around and just any any opportunity you get, Google Google it with the word reviews or, you know, bad reviews at the end of it and see what comes up. Yeah, <laughs> that is my advice with everything. <laughs> For sure. So number two on our list is have a toolkit sort of at the ready for any press opportunities that you might have. Um, would you like to talk about this a little bit, Isaac, about what would oh, go in? <laughs> I love toolkits. I'm a nerd for things like these. Um, so if, toolkits take a couple different forms. So there's like the basic stuff, which would be like your core brand assets. These are, you know, your logo file in various formats, um, your, you know, maybe a, a little one sheet about your business or um, your color palette or things like that, right? All, all the stuff that makes, you, makes up your business's brand uh, identity. But then you also have, uh, you should have in there some product photos, especially if you're dealing with print outlets or online outlets um, or even for TV. Like sometimes, you know, like like a local news spot will do like, a little like Ken Burns effect with like the photos slowly moving and things like that. Uh, having those photos at the ready, especially of your best selling products, is going to arm you to um, provide the best kind of information that's going to help um, whoever's doing the publicity. Um, that would that would mean, as far as photos go, that you have both high res and low res versions. So low res for print and high res for or, sorry, high res for print, low res for web. Um, 
that you uh, have some options for um, products that are on a white background. So think about gift guides. And this is something I know um, Sharon's talked about a lot in her last minute, um, uh, what's it called? Last minute PR webinar um, around the holidays is having uh, photos on white backgrounds helps for gift guides. Cause you'll see like, you know, in all the, like all the, all the rags you'll see, um, you know, like collages of different products that are all from different places. Well, they don't actually have those products. They're, they're just Photoshopping them all together because they're all in a white background. So they can just drop them out and then layer them all, right? So having some of those on hand is going to be hugely helpful for whoever's doing the actual um, design of the thing. And then you can, can also consider some lifestyle photos. And I cannot emphasize enough, and Sharon and I have gone on tirades about this before, but a professional headshot. No selfies, yes. no uh, no phone photos set up on a little tripod. You should have a professional headshot. It goes. So many people don't. So many people don't. You would be surprised at who does not. Like it's it's bad out there. Really, honestly, mm -hmm. and and that's I would fun to make it just look semi pro. Even like it doesn't need to come from an actual photo shoot sometimes, but it should at some level be more thought out than someone needs a photo. I better take a selfie now. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that it can't pr reflect your personality or your brand. Um, you know, there are fantastic photographers that will do professional headshots that are not like a LinkedIn business profile photo, you know, like you don't have to be dressed up in a pantsuit and on a, like a marbled background or anything like that. That's, that's a little too corporate, but um, having some sort of professional photo of yourself um, is absolutely important for these kinds of things. And we do have a link to our blog post on that. Let me throw that in there. there. You go. Yeah. Was that the one that we, we did with Sarah? Yes. Yes. So, so Sarah Darragon is a photographer based in the Bay Area who was at Craftcation last year. She'll be there again this year. And she does, um, they're called not, not so corporate headshots. Um, something like think, that. Something like that. If I didn't butcher her business name. Um, but she specializes in these types of things where you get a professional headshot, but it doesn't look like you went, it's, it doesn't look like a business version of a school portrait. Yes. Um, so definitely would recommend, even if you just have somebody that, who's a friend who has a good camera and you guys can start doing like your own photo shoot, <laughs> um, that at least that's, that's still better than a selfie. So baby steps, but as pros you can get, um, having your brand mission and story talking points. I think this is really a big deal. And like people can kind of skip over this, but like, what makes you special and all of that. Like you should not be thinking about that the night before when you're trying to, you know, talk to, talk to a reporter or something. That's, that should be all things that you have at the ready and have like sort of like a couple of key words that you know to say over and over again um, so that people understand what you're about as well too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I would I also like add in. Yes, go. Uh, I would also add in uh, having a few customer testimonials on hand in case anybody wants to know, you know, how your customers react to your products and be like, hey, these are actual legit testimonials. Um, and then to also include, uh, have on at the ready any awards or accolades you've received, uh, any kind of recognition, whether it's, you know, best in show at your local art market or, um even if that you participated in, in like highly competitive, um, you know, either like if you've done shows or whatever, like if you participated in things that are noteworthy, those, those can go into the accolades area too, just enough so that people have like a background on you. They might, the, you know, if it's a, a news story or something, they might not use it all, but like just having that is really helpful. Um, I remember what I was going to say is, be whoever you're working with be in contact with um asking to see what their what the final is going to be and and what their sort of editorial process is like um i say this because because i had a story 
um, like a questionnaire that I was kind of doing for um, like a, a, a kind of significant online publication. And um, I didn't realize that the that they were going to verbatim take what I wrote and put it out there and not really edit it. Because I had sort of cheekily put something in to the story that was more like a nod to the person that I was emailing with, not necessarily meant to go into the story. <laughs> So that got in there. Like, I didn't really think that that would go in, but it did. So just, just saying. Yeah, I had um, I, a couple of years ago, I was interviewed um, by a local reporter about an event that I worked on. And uh, I did not properly ask for how my like how I was going to be quoted and things like that and the final article came out and the guy completely misquoted me like in in a negative way like it was this really it was really awkward <laughs> and embarrassing and um the host of the event was like uh what is this and I was like I that is not <laughs> that is not what I said I don't know how this reporter heard that that is absolutely not what I said. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I wish I'd asked because I could have had that headed that off at the past and and you know been able to say, hey, you know, I'd like to review how you're quoting me to make sure it's accurate. I, and sometimes, you know, like reporters, they they seem benign enough. Most of them usually are, especially especially if they're working on more just like a feature kind of story. Like it's not hard news, but you know. They just kind of don't care sometimes. They, they will they will they will go with the quote that you gave that sounds the most uh salacious sometimes. And uh yeah, that will that can come back to bite you sometimes. Or you will you'll be friendly with them and you'll say things with them and you don't realize that they're taking that down too. So you might have personal thoughts that you can never reveal to them because um they're they're not your friend it's whatever is there can just get ble blood out into the world so mm -hmm. and sometimes they're so enthusiastic about getting the story that they want that they don't really pay attention to how what you're saying fits in with that or even that it might conflict with that and so that's that can be a recipe for disaster yeah all right Actual prepping for whatever it is that you're um, going to be doing. Um, big thing right off the bat, get a good night's sleep. If this is for like TV or video, um, usually a lot of times there's uh, early mornings involved with that. Um, and also even if it's, you know, if you're trying to, if it's some other sort of like craft fair opportunity or some sort of event where you have to be there and be there all day, um, you want to make sure that you're you're super well rested. It's true. I cannot tell you how many all-nighters I pulled before I realized that sleeping is more beneficial than cramming in work. Hard lesson learned. Uh, okay, so if you are if you're doing a photo or video shoot at your studio, um, our recommendation would be to have a tidy studio, but it doesn't it should not be immaculate. But first of all, you don't need to bend over backwards to clean and scrub every corner because a, a photo photographer or a videographer, like those aren't going to capture that kind of level of detail. If it's a little dusty on this cabinet, it's fine. It's not going to read that way. Um, and the other thing too spend is- Spend your time sleeping. <laughs> yeah, spend your time sleeping. Um, but the the whole point of being there and doing the photo or the video shoot in your space is to see it in a state of you making things, right? So it needs to at least look like it's being used, not that like you've got the perfect Instagram worthy desk photo, right? Um, be a little real about it. Let it let it be a little messy. Um, get the, you know, if you've got a, a tuft of dog hair on your desk or something, maybe that should go. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but it does not need to be a mess. Dust bunnies everywhere. Maybe that's another problem that we have to investigate. Uh... It looks like a hoarder's situation. Yes, do maybe straighten things up and put some things away. A little bit. I don't know. Got like uh... bowl of you know 
old macaroni and cheese that can go that doesn't need to stay that's not part of the artist's essence right <laughs> Um, another thing is ask about wardrobe preferences, anything that's going to be visual, if they're taking your picture, video or whatever, um, try to figure out what makes sense there. Ask about how you're going to be shot. Is it just going to be mostly from, you know, head up? Um, you know, obviously like don't come in wearing pajama bottoms, but like, you don't need to look like, you know, quite, quite as great on the bottom and just focus on the top. Um, Along with that, consider maybe professional hair and makeup, depending on uh, what time allows. At the very least, for the ladies, I would say try to do professional hair. Um, or maybe do the one that makes the most sense to you. But hair is easy to sleep on. And the next day, you know, if you have an early morning, you could, you might, you'll probably be able to do makeup on your own. Um, or if you have someone you know that can come over and do your makeup, that that can be helpful too. Um, but try not to go too crazy over the top with the makeup. I know sometimes people feel like, oh, it's, you know, this book, I'm on camera or whatever, but you don't necessarily need a ton more makeup than you usually wear. So just having some on is helpful. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, Sharon, but I don't know, before YHB TV each week, I get my hair did. <laughs> He just has a stylist on call in his office. It just comes yeah. out of that closet in there. <laughs> it's like an episode of Queer Eye. They just come out, fix them up, and then go back in. <laughs> uh, pretty much. Welcome, welcome to my world. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, another thing I would add is um, if you are doing so, like if you, if you're having somebody do a video spot. Um, or something and they want to capture your process, uh, really think through how to stage that appropriately. So um, one of the things to prep for that would be to have, you know, if your process, it takes longer, um, if you can't like make something start to finish in 10 seconds, um, then have various stages of materials at the ready so you can kind of take something through to completion. If you've ever seen a cooking show, um, you know, they don't, they don't cook an entire dish in three minutes. They've got, you know, all the stuff pre-prepped and then they're like doing an action shot of chopping onions. And then they, oh, look, suddenly they've been cooking the chicken over here on the stove. And then, oh, wait, here's the finished plated thing. So you can do the same thing to your work um, to kind of create those uh, visual interest points in those stages along the way. The other thing to think about is the, what's that? I have a funny quick thing about the magic of television. I know yeah, I a chef who had a morning spot and uh, the lady, so, you know, there was t TV and the reporter was there and it was what you said, right? Like they cooked the chicken beforehand. So obviously he looks like he's putting it on the grill for like five seconds and taking it off. Um, but the reporter, so the, the chef made everything and the reporter at the end refused to eat the chicken. <laughs> Because she's like, I'm not eating that undercooked chicken. And it was not undercooked. But you just take it and you just, even at that, just like take a bite and smile. You don't have to swallow everything or just take a little bit. You don't have to eat the chicken. It was whatever. Anyways. That's weird. Go uh, along with it, lady. Go along with it. <laughs> you should have been briefed on this. Um, so I, uh, relate. <laughs> <laughs> related to that, um, think about um, good activity or animation in your process too. What are some interesting things to capture? Um, years ago, I worked at an art college in the communications department and I would help coordinate um, photo shoots to go capture the different uh, art majors you know, doing their work. And we learned really quickly uh, a, a little bit through trial and error, what was interesting looking on camera in a still frame and what uh, is really boring. Um, you know what's really interesting in a still frame? Welding. Welding <laughs> is sexy. <laughs> you got the bright light, and the helmet, and the things. Um, but you know, something that's a little less sexy or a little less interesting in a photo um, would be, you know, uh, I would say like drawing in pencil. Like it just doesn't translate as well, right? All you just get is a stock photo of a pencil drawing on a page. Um, so think about things in your process that are animated, especially if you're doing video. 
um, or that are really unique and interesting that that people who have no, know nothing about your process would be really interested to see? Um, I would say another thing is that you should be getting yourself ready to publish it, be, be able to talk about yourself enough, but also along with that is like publicity for your shop is happening. So you want to have your shop stocked up. <laughs> you want people to go and not be like, oh, this Etsy shop is on vacation or, oh, there's only two things in here. What's going on? So make sure that your shop, the shop is stocked up again, kind of like with your studio, depending on how much time you have. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like the night before is not the time to do a website overhaul on everything. It should just be functional and you should just be able to sell as much as possible so that when people go there, especially if whatever it is you are featuring, if it's, if it's for print or if it's, you know, whatever you're featuring visually, make sure to have that item in your shop because people will go there and be like, I saw this, I want this. And you're like, Oh no, no, I actually don't make that anymore. And it's like, well, that's stupid. Like, don't, don't do that. So, and um, well, yeah. I was going to add to that. Um, what happens if you do sell out of it? Do you have a backup plan in place? So do you have an email sign up? Um, is there, yeah. is there a way to capture people's information so that when you do have it back in, in stock, um, you can get in touch with them and give them the opportunity to buy. Totally. Keisha just said that even a landing page with carousel and an images and a place to enter an email address, you can collect names. Definitely. Exactly. And then let everyone know when things are back in stock. So yep. along with that is that you need to have your business talking points down. You want to take this? Yeah. Uh, okay. Talking points for your business. If you are going to be on TV or on any kind of video, say your business name often, especially mm -hmm. if it's an odd business name, and spell it out if needed. Uh, people, especially if they're watching TV, don't retain stuff very well. So the more times you're able to say it and work it into conversation, the more likely they are to retain it. Um, you also, in, on that note, you want to make sure you're enunciating and uh, speaking very clearly so that it registers really well. Another thing uh, to do is to have the easiest way possible for people to visit your shop. So um, if you, you know, if you have a, a really long URL for a name, um, you might want to either create a short link or um, maybe register a shorter domain that redirects to your main website as a way to send people uh, to that a little bit easier. Um, you know, even if you say like, hey, my website is um, focallengthdesigns.etsy.com, that's a little much for people to retain. So instead you could say, you know, visit fld.com and it maybe that redirects to your Etsy shop. That way it's really easy for people to retain and uh, punch into their browser when they're ready. Um, <laughs> Third thing uh, is really hone in on your what. I know that a lot of people talk about knowing what your why is. Um, but in this case, when it comes to publicity, you really need to be able to succinctly say what it is that you sell in a way that people who have no idea who you are can understand. So I don't know if she's watching today, but my friend Amanda Siska from Bread and Badger has a really, really succinct way of saying this, and I hope I'm remembering it correctly, but she says something to the effect of um, bread and badger sells sandblasted gifts for your home. That So it's kind of an elevator pitch, but it, it takes out any kind of why. And it's just like, what is it that I need to remember so that I later on I go, um, oh, I'm looking for a gift for my friend as a housewarming thing. I There's somebody I know who does gifts for the home. And they're handmade. So I'm going to go to Bread and Badger and uh, go that route. Um, so really honing in on that what is is important. Totally. Um, I want to give you guys um, also a little bit of a help in this area. Um, the link in there is a doc for uh, a PR crash course to start thinking about. Um, 
being proactive about um, pitching, but this will also help you to, to think about stuff for your own business too. If somebody comes to you and wants, wants you to be part of a promo, you'll have already thought of some of this stuff too. So, um, and then if you are thinking about the holidays and promo, it says last minute holiday promo. We did this last year, but it still has a ton of relevant information. Um, that That is also in the link as well in the chat area too, as well, if you're interested. So all that to say that if you're evaluating the opportunities as they come and you are, you have your toolkit ready and you're prepping well, things are going to go pretty smoothly. Um, this kind of stuff will help arm you to go into any kind of press situation um, with a little style and panache and uh, really be at your best to promote your business um, no matter what form that takes. Um, so hopefully this helps you. Uh, I hope some people were taking notes and jotting down some things that they can uh, put together for themselves um, to be ready. But um, I would also say that all of this stuff is great to have whether or not something is last minute. Um, you, you know, if you have your toolkit at the ready, that, that right there is a press kit that you can then send out to actually solicit uh, things. So it, it has a longer life than just dealing with the, the last minute stuff. Definitely. Um, if you guys are going to be around next week, same time, same place, uh, we are going to be talking about your ideal wholesale customer, which means basically the ideal stores that you would want to be in. We talk a lot about your ideal customer um, avatar and things like that in your business to locate, but we don't often talk about the ideal shops to be in. So we're going to discuss that a little bit next mm -hmm. week. It's going to be good. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Replay is happening right after this. If you, um, came in late. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments, um, we might still be able to hang out a little bit in the chat after. Um, but let us know or actually the best place is the uh, Facebook group to ask questions. So we will see you guys all next week. Bye. Bye.